How to wire the XE series pump. Now that we know a little bit about how the pumps are going to be offered, let's go through how to wire them. I'm going to take you through the steps on how to wire the TriStar XE series pump, but keep in mind that all three models available in the XE series lineup will be wired in the exact same manner. The XC series pump must be installed on a GFCI protected circuit. When wiring the pump for 230 volts AC, we recommend using either the Square D Homeline HOM220 GFIC breaker or the Siemens QF220A breaker. When wiring the pump for 115 volts AC, we recommend using either the Square D Homeline HOM120 GFIC breaker or the Siemens QF120AP breaker. The first thing that we're going to do is connect the bonding wire to the bonding lug located at the top of the motor near where the motor flange meets the seal plate. Begin by using a flathead screwdriver to loosen the set screw in your bonding lug. Once your set screw has been loosened enough to accommodate the bonding wire, insert your bonding wire into the lug and tighten it until it is secure. Now that we've connected the bond wire, we can move on to the line voltage wiring. In order to access the wiring compartment, we must remove the electrical access cover. In order to do so, you must loosen the two screws towards the center of the motor and completely remove the two screws towards the outer edge of the motor. You can use either a quarter inch nut driver or a number two Phillips head screwdriver to complete this process. Once you have removed the two screws on the outer edge and loosened the two screws towards the center of the motor, you can remove the electrical cover by gently pulling it out and towards the outside of the motor. And now we have access to the electrical compartment. The XC series pump can be wired for 230 volt applications or 115 volt applications. Now I want to point out that the XC series pump from the factory is configured with the jumper at the 230 volt location. In order to convert it to 115 volts, simply remove the jumper and place it in the 115 volt terminal, which is located just above the 230 volt terminal. In order to do so, use a pair of needle nose pliers, remove the jumper, and then move it right up to the 115 volt terminal. And now the pump has been converted to 115 volts. First, insert your half-inch conduit connector into the threaded half-inch port on the side of the motor. Now, we can feed our wire into the wiring compartment and then secure our conduit to the conduit connector. Now, we're going to begin wiring the pump. We're going to prepare our ground wire in order to be connected to the ground screw. Next, we're going to connect our line one wire to the line one terminal on the pump, which is the terminal at the top. And we're going to secure that to the pump using a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure that your wire is completely under the terminal. Once line one is connected, you can now connect line two for 230 volt applications by again using a number two Phillips head screwdriver. And again, verify that your wire is landed completely underneath of the terminal. Once the wiring is complete, route your wires to where they're inside the terminal block. Remember, you need to keep at least six inches of wire inside the panel at all times to allow for future service. Next, we're going to reinstall the electrical access cover by sliding the cover in towards the two screws that we left installed on the back of the motor to where the openings for the screws will line up behind the screw head. Once the cover is in place, we can secure it by tightening all four screws. Now the wiring for your XC series pump is complete. The XC series pump does not require a time clock. However, they are highly recommended. Any time that power has been interrupted and then reapplied to the XC series pump, your interval sequence is going to revert back to the beginning of interval number one, regardless of where you are in that sequence. This could cause you inconsistencies in your daily interval start and stop times. 
Using a time clock with on and off trips will help provide you with a consistent daily interval start and stop time. When connecting the line voltage to your time clock, follow the instructions found within the timer's installation manual that apply to your application. Set the timers on and off trips in the same manner as you would if setting up a single speed pump. Be certain to take the interval speeds into consideration. For example, if you're going to operate the pump at lower speeds in order to take advantage of the ultra high energy efficiency of the XE series pump, you will need to extend the runtime of the pump in order to achieve proper turnover rates. Make certain that you adjust your off trip to accommodate the extended runtime. Even if you are planning to operate your pump for 24 hours a day, it is still recommended to adjust the trips on your time clock in order to allow for a consistent interval start and stop time each day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Hayward University's virtual training series. Don't forget to visit www.totallyhayward.com to register for our next webinar.